And we continue with our Katiba at 10 series. Devolution was an integral part of the long struggle for reforms and a new constitutional order. A decade ago, Kenyans endorsed a new supreme law that introduced a two-tier model of governance the national government and the 47 county governments. And it has been a seven year journey of devolved resources and power, but one characterized by highs and lows. Francisca Shuri examines the politics of devolution and the often fractious relationship between the national government and the county governments, particularly over resources that ought to follow the devolved functions. For years, governance in Kenya was a centralized affair. The president wielded the absolute authority. Literally, he held the yam and the knife. Development and state jobs followed the presidential desire, leading to a deep-rooted culture of psychophancy and blind loyalty to the state house occupant. But after a series of misses, finally Kenyans threw the ballot in August 2010 endorsed a document that kicked off the journey to devolved governance. It has been seven years of devolution the first set of governors, senators and county assembly members elected in 2013. Kiraito Murungi has seen it all. Having participated in the constitution-making process as a member of Parliament and Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister and currently as Meru Governor, believes devolution is a game-changer. I think devolution is accompanied by a certain tension. Uh, those ones at the center... Uh, wanting to control uh, more resources and without really paying too much attention to you know what happens at the periphery and the counties. And then the counties fighting for more independence and more resources. So I see ourselves in the middle of that struggle. While the constitution was very well intentioned, uh, the status quo uh, those with vested interests in the old political economy have been playing rearguard to try and ensure that uh, that economy is not questioned, is not redressed, it continues, and, and therefore the implementation of the Constitution has, uh, by and large, been skewed. The fourth schedule in the Constitution clearly outlines distribution of functions between the national government and county governments, agriculture, county health services, control of air and noise pollution, cultural activities, county roads and early childhood education are among 14 key functions that were devolved. While the functions were decentralized, control of resources assigned to these services are yet to fully trickle down to the counties. Uh, actually, what government has been doing, they have been hiding resources which are supposed to come to the counties in, in a parastatus. So like now agriculture is a fully devolved function. But instead of passing the resources to, to us in the counties, they will go and put resources in, in a parastatus called AFA. Uh, and then AFA has the directorate it has a crops directorate. So 80% of agriculture money still ends in the national government, hidden in a parastatal. And then we only get about 20, 20%. Same with the roads. There is this parastatal called Kera, Kenya Rural Roads Authority. There are no rural, rural roads in Nairobi. The rural roads are in Samburu, Meru, Turukana, Kirapahari. But instead of us, being given that money, the money is given to a uh, carer. The struggle at the moment is to make sure that the money uh, is enough money sent to counties. Before even we can decide what formula we divide, we must first give a reasonable amount of resources to the counties to run their functions. Number two, we must, uh, we must uh, ensure that the functions are transferred, properly transferred. Some of the functions still being held at the national level. 
Every so often, governors and pundits have accused the national government of trying to strangle devolution by holding on to resources or disbursing them late into the financial year, bureaucracy at the national treasury being used as a secret weapon by proponents of status quo, the scramble for the devolved resources often igniting a row in parliament every so often. How much resources are going to the counties, remember, we talked about a minimum of 15%, but now whatever is being proposed about that 5% going to the counties. In fact, if that happens, then you find that it will address some of these issues that are now being uh, bring a stalemate in the, in the Senate because then we'll have uh, more resources going to the counties. In fact, we're blaming governors for accepting 316.5 billion in the first place. Why did they accept it at the IBEC meeting? You know, they're the ones who brought us into this problem. So the governors themselves are to blame for this uh, problem because they accepted an amount that they knew they couldn't share. Because even if we used the old formula, but with the new data, counties would lose. Because the county was number 10 in population, now has become number 25. So you'd lose money uh, as well. And they didn't think that far. The Kenyans are missing out on the fact that uh, this struggle in the Senate is about sharing a mere 316 billion in a budget of 2.7 trillion. And, and those who control the levers of power are very happy to see that because as you are busy fighting over 316, you do not know what they are doing with the balance of 2.4 uh, trillion. So they can continue with the status quo and so on. I think we focus too much on dismantling the imperial presidency that we forgot to dismantle the imperial financial system. A clerk there in treasury now determines whether a governor will get money or not. If you have a president who calls the Minister for Finance and tells him, stop all this money to the counties, that will be the end of the revolution. I think the issue has been understanding in terms of, you know, a request and processing of the details, you know, through the, the IFMI system, all those all those uh, processes are the ones that sometimes are, uh, are blamed for delay. But I want to say that the government has transferred all the money to the, to the county government. And where there have been delayed, that has been resolved. Devolution was essentially meant to deal with a vicious presidential race every five years that often takes an ethnic angle with the belief that a region from where the state house occupier hails from stands a better chance in accessing state resources and jobs. Sometimes Kenyans get blighted by the occupier of the, the office of the presidency. We don't know who is going to be the president 10, 20 years from now. And I think the best guarantee we can have for our people is to push more money into the counties. So that it does not matter whether the president is from the Trukana, Saburu, wherever, we are assured that we can do our own hospitals, we can do our own roads, and we can do basic development for our people. In the raging debate on amending the constitution, a section of the health workers is advocating for reverting of the health function to the national government, while others are pushing for the establishment of a health service commission that will recruit and deploy medics across the country. The issue of health being given back to the national government is an issue of giving the dog a bad name before you get a reason to kill it. There is a, so much money being spent in health and people feel they cannot see that money being spent at the county level. They would rather have it spent at the national level. That's why we, you see now this came as a thing. I'm be completely opposed uh, to any suggestions that health be removed now from you know, the devolved units back to the national government. It will be a dangerous president. I wouldn't want to say that there is an, a, a specific determination to revert the health sector back to the, to the national government. I want to say that overall, we are going to do an assessment of the implementation of the constitution, looking at the gaps, looking at, the, uh, looking at, the, uh, at what has been experienced, to see what sort of adjustment do we need to make. 
Devolution is part of the articles targeted for amendment, particularly on the amount of resources that should be allocated to counties. The initial BBI draft report recommending an increase from 15% to at least 35% of the share based on the last audited accounts, form and structure of counties, also a subject of debate. In terms of devolved units, do we increase or decrease the number of counties? Do we really look at the boundaries? Are some counties too big? Are some too few? Uh, too small, that is. How about the functions of the governor vis-a-vis -vis the county assembly? Do we want to regulate the question of impeachment of governors, especially in terms of how often it can be done? But governors have also been accused of mismanaging devolved resources with past and present county heads facing corruption charges, devolution of plunder and graft, tainting the hard-fought model of governance. Governors are part of the contradictions that bedevil our society. Uh, there is no governor sitting in Kemsa, as we are talking now. No governors were sitting in the National Health Service. So there's corruption at the top, there's corruption in the bottom, and even the farmers who are selling, selling milk the workers are adding water, the milk, and they sell it. So let us accept this is a national problem, this is a societal problem, and let us not single out governors. We must ensure that we have independent and objective uh, processes of fighting corruption in the counties that are not politically motivated and not to the benefit of any side of, of the political divide. Ultimately, there is consensus that devolution has brought development to areas that were hitherto marginalized and is one of the shining stars of the Constitution 10 years later. Francis Gashuri, Citizen TV.